nights on A News at 6. It's a perfect day to hit the beach, but all it takes is seconds for something to go wrong. Coming up, I'll tell you how lifeguards are preparing for a busy summer season. The ride for sight rolls into Aurelia this weekend. Coming up, the surprising effect this charitable event has. And riot aftermath, what's being done to catch those responsible. This is A News at 6. Good evening. Their effectiveness on the job is a matter of life and death. Sadly, hundreds of Canadians drown every year, and with the official start of summer just a few days away, local lifeguards are busy getting ready. Mike Walker joins us now from Barry's Waterfront with more on what's being done ahead of the summer season. Mike. Well, Chris, it's definitely been a perfect day to hit the beach. I'm here at Centennial Beach in Whippy, where it's been packed all day long. Now, as much as it's fun to enjoy the beach, all it takes is seconds for tragedy to strike. And that's exactly what lifeguards in our region were preparing for today. Scott Stevens is training for his first summer as a lifeguard at Kuchiching Beach Park in Aurelia. This is an awesome job at the beach and an opportunity to be outside all summer. And though the job may sound ideal, Stevens has to be prepared for an emergency to strike in an instant. He's one of 15 lifeguards being put through the paces today. Learning how to properly respond to any emergency that may arise at the beach. People aren't safe. Um, rescues, we could get lots. Owen Sinclair has been a lifeguard for five years, has been involved in many rescues. Last summer we had a gentleman who dislocated his shoulder. Uh, we had to assist him out of the water, call 911. In that case, the victim made a full recovery, but others haven't been so lucky. In the last two years, there have been 10 drownings reported in Simcoe County, most of those occurring on waterways not supervised by lifeguards. Good work! Christine Mitchell is preparing the lifeguards for a busy summer. She says all too often rescues involve young children. A little kid could not be able to swim and decide they want to try and jump off the dock and go under. you got to come back a little bit. For that reason, Kathy Smith doesn't let her nine-year-old twins, Chelsea and Dustin, stray too far in the water. I just make sure that I'm on them 24-7. Uh, my eyes are always on them. Yeah, you, you have to be. It takes only two seconds before something happens. So. Now, lifeguards will be on duty at beaches right across our region starting the Canada Day-long weekend right through to September. But with hundreds of people to watch over at a time, they say it's up to you to take precaution and know your limits when out in the water. Reporting live for A News, I'm Mike Walker. Chris, back to you. Thank you, Mike. And according to the Canadian Life Saving Society, drownings have spiked in recent years. The most recent statistics come from 2005, when there were 492 drowning deaths reported in this country. That's up dramatically from 433 drownings the year before. The Life Saving Society also says drowning is the third leading cause of accidental death among Canadians under the age of 60 and the second leading cause of accidental death among children under the age of 10. Men are four times more likely to drown than women. Most drownings occur while people are swimming, followed by power boating and then fishing. Well, from the water to our roads now, where the OPP's latest blitz targeting commercial vehicles has now wrapped up. And it seems that drivers are getting the message there. Fewer charges were laid during this week's 24-hour blitz, also known as Operation Corridor. Police stopped more than 850 vehicles and laid about 320 charges for speeding and equipment violations as well. 50 vehicles had to be pulled off the road for equipment issues. Now, during last year's blitz, more than 400 charges were laid. A steel worker is recovering in hospital tonight following after falling off a roof in Bradford. The accident happened here at this construction site near Highway 88 and the 10th side road. The 35-year-old man from St. Catharines was working on the roof when he fell off to the ground early yesterday morning. He was taken to hospital in Toronto by ground ambulance with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The Ministry of Labour is now investigating. It takes place in seven communities across the country and is the longest-running motorcycle charity fundraiser in Canada. Bridget Brown now has more the, for the 33rd annual Ride for Sight and explains why the ride continues to rumble. It's time to get your motor running and get out on the highway, all for a good cause. 
the Ride for Sight roared into Aurelia this weekend. It's the largest fundraiser for the Foundation for Fighting Blindness. Thousands of bikers pay their dues and hit the road to help people like 16-year-old Megan Vanderite. What I have is called retinitis pigmentosa, and it takes away my peripheral vision, so it's tunnel vision. Um, it, it's degenerative, so it just keeps going until eventually I really won't have very much vision at all. The ride started in Newfoundland 33 years ago and spread across the country. Each rider has to donate $75, but many raise hundreds or even thousands just to help. Not many of these people know someone that's blind, and, uh, and here they are raising money and doing their thing. Some people raising like big, big bucks. The Vanderite family raises thousands of dollars themselves. It was hard for my family and me to figure out that I had something that couldn't be fixed. So I think that the biggest thing is that we all want to find a cure. Instead of just raising money this year, Bill also bought a motorcycle and rode for the first time. The family tradition is a big part of what brings many riders out year after year, including Kara Trotter and Will Walker, who actually used the occasion to get married when they arrived yesterday. Well, we come here every year, and it's a Father's Day thing, so we're already here, so we thought we'd do that. And everybody was already going to be here. Made it perfect. With so many people coming out to have fun and for their own tradition, it's easy to forget just how much effect the event actually has. Last year, the Ride for Sight raised $1 million for fighting blindness, and the Foundation for Fighting Blindness believes it's on track to raise even more this year. Reporting in Aurelia for A News, I'm Bridget Brown. It was the first time for another motorcycle ride today as well. This one in support of a young girl in her fight that nearly turned fatal. Okay! Wearing wings, four-year-old Ashley Logan waves dozens of cyclists over the start line for the first ever Ashley's Angels motorcycle ride. The ride is in support of liver transplant research at Sick Kids Hospital, something Ashley's mom, Sherry, says the family knows all too well. Literally, she was dying in my arms, so that was heartbreaking um, to be a part of, and I will never forget that. That one's for you. At the age of two, Ashley experienced acute liver failure. Doctors say it was because of a virus. Your child is everything to you, and your whole world collapsed. You can't breathe, you can't think, you can't do anything. The youngster was placed on a nationwide transplant list, but the fear was they wouldn't be able to find a match in time. That's until Ashley's Aunt Cheryl turned out to be the perfect match. Being able to say that I'm now in a position where I have saved someone's life, not only someone's life, but someone who is so important to me, um, it's truly incredible. Within days, Cheryl Brandon had a portion of her liver removed and donated, and young Ashley was given a second chance. All right, so you leave. So Ashley's doing quite well now, which is fantastic, and, and um, that definitely helps you get past those feelings and doing something positive about it to help make her life the best it can be. Now the family is raising money as a way to say thanks and an aunt and her niece have an unbreakable bond. We both have little scarves um, and she calls hers Mount Aunt Cheryl and we have a bond that forever will will be extremely special to both of us. And from taking a ride to Girls on the Run, about 2,000 girls from across Simcoe County took part in a unique event aimed at preparing them for a lifetime of self-respect and healthy living. Our cameras were there as the special five-kilometer run kicked off at Barry's Waterfront. <laughs> Girls on the Run started over 15 years ago. Girls on the Run Simcoe County started nine years ago. And it was just a bunch of women who got together, found the program, um, and decided that we wanted to empower some young girls in our community. It grew because it's such a spectacular program. It teaches self-esteem and body image. It promotes healthy lifestyle, and it just snowballed from there. And now we're 54 schools in Simcoe County. The fact of believing in themselves and knowing that they can do whatever they choose to do was a, a really big trend in the girls and it was nice to see that they actually felt that way. My run was really tiring but it was lots of fun and I felt like I had lots of confidence to keep going. Girls on the run, girls on the run, girls on the run, it's so much fun. 
it felt happy. I I thought I couldn't do it, but now I can. Awesome. It felt great. I thought I couldn't do it, just like Tegan. And we just want to change and shift some um, thinking in young girls today so they grow up to be content young women. Today's run is part of a program called Girls on the Run Simcoe County, which uses the power of running to change the way girls see themselves. It began in 2003 as a pilot project with just 26 participants. Today, as we mentioned, more than 2,000 girls were involved. Well, a program of another kind has kids from across the county out and active today as well. They weren't hitting the pavement, but getting back to their rural roots. Always cattle's first reaction will be that of a prey animal. They're going to want to run away first, get a safe distance, and then take another look at you and see if it's safe. <laughs> Nearly 100 junior 4-H members from across the province gathered at a Cremor farm for the first ever Junior Cattlemen's Day. The event is a chance for kids between the ages of 10 and 20 to learn about the cattle industry. The beef boot camp included a number of hands-on activities and also some demonstrations. And from rural roots to some real deals in Midland. Music filled the air as vendors lined the sidewalks and bargain hunters searched for deals. It was part of the second annual street sale and community market day where nonprofit community groups sell their items for individual fundraising. The event is hosted by the Downtown Business Improvement Association. King Street was closed for much of the day for the sale but, will, or but did reopen, I should say, a few hours ago. This is May News at 6. Walked Out Canada Post employees are launching a number of rallies and talking to politicians this weekend to gain some public support. The rallies being held in four Canadian cities, include Toronto, uh, come ahead of a back-to-work legislation that Labour Minister Lisa Raitt says she intends to bring to Parliament next week. Some mail will continue to move on Monday, though. Both union workers and Canada Post have agreed to deliver social assistance and pension checks regardless of the dispute's status. Well, British Columbia's Premier wants lawyers working for the province to take a tough stance on those involved in last Wednesday's riots. B.C. Premier Christy Clark says the province will fund a special prosecution team and is offering the insurance corporation of B.C.'s identification software. Already, at least a half dozen people have now surrendered to Vancouver police. Clark is also encouraging the public to submit stories and good deeds during the rioting so those people can be uh, given some recognition, too. Meanwhile, Water Polo Canada is suspending one of its players over his alleged involvement in the Stanley Cup riots. The organization took action after news reports showed Nathan Kodalak apparently stuffing a burning rag into the gas tank of a police car. He was also videotaped allegedly throwing what appeared to be a burning object into the vehicle. Kodalak has ad was identified and indicated that he will cooperate with the investigation. A hearing will be held within seven days to determine his future. All right, now to the good side of sports. Here's Mike Garcelides. Mike? Exactly, Chris. From madness and chaos in Vancouver to jubilation today in Boston. That's Bruins captain Zajano Chara hoisting the Stanley Cup today for the city's championship parade. Hundreds of thousands of fans lined the streets of Beantown to celebrate the Bruins' first cup win in 39 years. In case you're keeping track, the Toronto Maple Leafs haven't won Lord Stanley's mug in 44 years. Meanwhile, a day after shooting a record second round at Congressional, Rory McIlroy was trying to avoid another collapse today. We head to the U.S. Open in 10 minutes' time. And coming up next, Casey Colby is on vacation, so we'll try to stumble through weather together. Stick around. You're watching A News. Win $10,000 cash only at Douglas Ford Lincoln, Bayfield Street, Barry. When you buy or lease any new or used car or truck, Ford offers more vehicles with best-in-class fuel economy than any other brand. Go further for less. As low as 0% financing or manufacturer's rebates up to $7,000 plus $1,000 Costco. One, home today. one person wins cash only at Douglas Ford Lincoln, Bayfield Street, Barry.
travel. They're called groundbreaking, exciting, and sensational. An explosion of comedy, music, and fun. And now they're bringing their newest, most innovative theatrical production to you. Experience the phenomenon. Blue Man Group. Live on stage at the Princess of Wales Theatre, July 19th through the 30th. For tickets, go to Mervish.com. Would you like this beautiful flower garden in your yard without having to plant seed by seed? Introducing Seed in a Blanket. Seed in a Blanket contains all the flower seeds you need. Just roll it out or cut to any shape. Water. And in a few short weeks, you can enjoy a beautiful butterfly and hummingbird garden with 20 flower varieties. Also look for the English Cottage Garden and Shade Loving Garden. You can only find Seed in a Blanket at the Home Depot. We give a fear, uh, and bread is red. Yeah. Thrills on our mind, stealing in our head. We're back to speed, we own this place. Yeah. We live to ride, let's go. Only the best, we're the ride warriors. A Canada's wonderland. You're built for speed, and these bad boys, they're built just for you. Canada's wonderland, ride on. This program is brought to you by LMFAO's new album, Sorry for Party Rockin', featuring the number one single, Party Rock Anthem. LMFAO, Sorry for Party Rockin', available June 21st. Welcome back. It was definitely a pretty decent day to be out in the boat, as long as the uh, waves weren't too big where you were. Sunny, yes. Windy, also today. But uh, good news is we have some more sun in the forecast. Let's take a look, though, first at how we did today. 24 degrees, mainly sunny skies. Right now, the wind's out of the north. Uh, those are the winds we're talking about that kind of cooled things down a little bit. 17 kilometers an hour. Barometer sitting at 101.2 and falling. Humidity at 41%. Uh, sunrise, well, it rose just before, about 5.34, about 15 and a half hours of sun today. So a pretty decent day overall so far, especially when it comes to sunlight, which it was. Uh, your, atmos your atmospheric composite, as you can see, there's something moving in from the west, but right now we're <laughs> under clear skies. Let's get off that and move along and take a look at the temperatures because that's just the best thing to do right now. All right, here we go. 14 degrees, clear skies in Toronto. Throughout York Region, 12s tonight. 13 in Richmond Hill, 14 in Markham. Uh, clear skies expected. Uh, for the overnight hours. Tomorrow, Sunday, to round out your week, this is all that we really care about right now, isn't it? Sunny skies expected, highs pretty decent, 23, 24 degrees for York Region. In Simcoe County, for tonight, 12 degrees, 13 uh, degrees in Wasaga Beach, Owen Sound, and Collingwood, also 12s in Penetanguishene, Midland, uh, and the city of Aurelia as well. And tomorrow for Simcoe County, it, again, a pretty decent way to end the weekend. Uh, 24 degrees, mainly sunny skies, 25 in the city of Barrie, 21 in Collingwood, but a pretty decent way, as I said, to end the weekend. In Cottage Country tonight, down to uh, almost single digits, single digits in Halliburton at 9, 11s and 10s, 12 in Perry Sound, but clear skies tonight. Then tomorrow we'll see also mainly sunny skies and highs of 24 degrees. Here's your five-day forecast. The five-day weather forecast is brought to you by Georgian Buick GMC. And a shot of uh, downtown Barrie. Uh, it's actually the waterfront, of course, and uh, the little area, the fountains where the kids like to cool off on days like today, and families get to uh, hang out there and have some fun. Shot from our beautiful camera in downtown Barrie. Uh, in Simcoe County, there is a slight chance of some shower activity, a high of 21 degrees, 23 on Tuesday with a mix of sun and cloud. Then for Wednesday, uh, clouds and some showers expected, a high of 23 degrees, also showers on Thursday and 22, but back into the sunny skies and 20 on Friday. In York Region, for Monday, a bit of a mixed bag. Then you can see we'll have a mix of sun and cloud and 24 on Tuesday. The wet stuff back in the forecast. Showers expected for Wednesday and also for Thursdays. Highs there is of 23 degrees, Friday at 20 and mainly sunny skies. In Muskoka, Perry Sound, Halliburton, again, possibly some wet stuff, uh, 22, 24, and mainly sunny, or a mix of sun and cloud, we'll call that. Then Wednesday and Thursday, uh, showers expected, highs of 22 degrees. Friday, sunny and 19 degrees as your five-day forecast. All right, it's time now to check your marine report, which looks like this. At Lake Simcoe, winds out of the north, 5K, waves less than a meter high, temperature 20 degrees in the water. Georgian Bay, a little bit cooler, as you can see, 11 degrees Celsius there. Again, waves less than one meter tall, west uh, winds out of the west at 5K. 
When it comes to the Trent Severn uh, waterway system, the hours of operations are as you can read on your screen. Of course, open 9 till 7 on the weekends, which uh, is right now. So there you go, open till 7 o'clock tonight. So for another about uh, 40 minutes or so. So that the Marine Report is brought to you by Blue Water Acres, fractional cottage ownership in Muskoka. All righty, over to sports now. Good luck, Mike. Thanks so much. Excellent job, Chris. The Blue Jays are back in action tonight, going for another win against the Cincinnati Reds, while the Baycats are at home to Kitchener, and they smoked them last Sunday. Will Barry do it again? We'll tee up the matchup next in sports. You're watching A News. Would you like this beautiful flower garden in your yard without having to plant seed by seed? Introducing Seed in a Blanket. Seed in a Blanket contains all the flower seeds you need. Just roll it out or cut to any shape. Water. And in a few short weeks, you can enjoy a beautiful butterfly and hummingbird garden with 20 flower varieties. Also look for the English Cottage Garden and Shade Loving Garden. You can only find Seed in a Blanket at the Home Depot. Never before. On So You Think You Can Dance. You don't know what you're going to do, do you? It's impossible. Really? And no one saw it coming. We are not going to let anybody go home. On the next So You Think You Can Dance. Don't get too excited. It's double trouble. Next week, two couples, one. See why these dancers are too good to go home. On all new So You Think You Can Dance. Wednesday at 8 on A. Hugh Jackman in concert. Spend an evening with actor Hugh Jackman as he shares some of his favorite musical numbers accompanied by an 18-piece orchestra. He takes an intimate look back at the road that led this boy from Oz to Hollywood, Broadway, and beyond. Hugh Jackman in concert. July 5th through 17th only at the Princess of Wales Theater. For tickets, go to Mervish.com. Hugh Jackman in concert. Thank you so much for coming. Hi, I'm Barbara from Meridian, here to tell you about our no-bounce check service. If a check is about to bounce, we call and work with you to stop it. It saves you time, money, and a whole lot of hassle. It's just part of the great service we offer all of our members. Now, we can't call you to remind you of dentist appointments, anniversaries, or to set your clock back. That's all you. Visit meridianbanking.ca today. Meridian. Your money, your way. Imagine that. My son's been dying to get into the water. How safe is the water you swim in? I worry about, you know, air infections and the kinds of, you know, stuff that could be in the water. We look below the surface to see how our local lakes measure up. Trust the Midas Touch to get your car ready for summer. At Midas Auto Service and Tires in Barrie, it starts with the best undercar care. Brakes, exhaust, suspension, and tires. But think of us as your complete car care experts. Now is the time to straighten out those shakes and vibrations. Our wheel balance and alignment specialists will ensure that your vehicle runs straight and safe for all your vacation driving. Midas. Great personal service. Always reliable and professional with no surprises. Welcome back. We'll start at Congressional in Maryland for day three of the U.S. Open, where Rory McIlroy followed up on his historic second round, 66. McIlroy busting out of the gates today. This is his third shot on three. McIlroy trying to save par on the hole, and he does just that. Parking the ball just feet from the cup. Then on the next hole, Rory from the sand, and he salvages another par with this gorgeous bunker beauty. He now sits at 13 under through nine holes. His nearest competition is American Lee Westwood, and this is Lee on 16 for Eagle, and Westwood nails it. He is eight strokes back at five under, tied with Jason Day. A week after they embarrassed Kitchener 17-7, the Baycats return to Barry Metal Stadium tonight. Sean, five RBI last Sunday, and he's not the only one on fire. The Baycats have scored 29 runs in their last two contests, while Kitchener is the exact opposite. They've lost five in a row, and on the mound tonight for Barry is Brad Bissell, while Brandon Farquhar handles the pitching duties for the Panthers. First pitch is 7 p.m. from Midhurst, and we will have your highlights on A News at 11. To the majors, where the Jays 
Go over their second straight win in Cincy against the Reds tonight. Last night, Jose Batista drove in Corey Patterson, while Adam Lynn continued to swing a hot bat with a two-run shot in the seventh. He's homered in four in a row. Toronto sends a struggling Brandon Morrow to the mound. First pitch is 7.05. The Midland Indians and Twins are two of seven teams vying for the Pizza Pizza Invitational title in Midland this weekend. Thanks to their catcher's cannon for an arm, the Angus Black Sox didn't go down without a fight today. The defending champs, Knights, Orangeville, Bolton, and Midland, want to put on a show for their fans. They should come out to see this because they got to support their home team and because it's the best baseball you'll find in the area, that's for sure. Yeah. Come out and play hard. Beautiful day for ball. And uh, just going to play some good D and uh, hopefully score some runs early. Which they did. New Lowell had a great game against the Black Sox today and are the front runners to play tomorrow's championship final at Tiffin Park in Midland. The Barry Lakeshores showed their gutsiest game last night at home when Dustin Lee tied the contest with 9.2 seconds to go and then... <laughs> Lee put his team up in a 10 minute overtime period but after Burlington tied the contest, Kenny Murphy takes the feed from Daniel Craig and scores the game winner. Lakeshores take it 11-10 and will host Peterborough tomorrow night at the Holly Rec Center. And finally, Barry Colt's assistant coach David Bell has moved on. After two years with the team, Bell has accepted a GM and head coach position with the Quad City Mallards of the AA Central Hockey League. Best of luck. That's it for sports. Chris. All right, thanks, Mike. Sounds like a move up. That's all the time we have for now. Thank you very much for watching. We'll leave you now with the sights and sounds of the Georgian Bay Brass Band. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching your local news, and bye for now.